Hi, English 121 students. This is Miss Douglas Harris, and I am sharing my modeling video for how to craft your claim. So before I begin crafting my claim, I'm going to go back to the rubric, and I'm going to ground myself in what my claim needs to be. So again, the rubric builds. So you can't get a C until you've earned a D, so on and so forth. So I'll start with the D level and take a look. So my claim needs to be valid and precise. In order for it to be valid, I need to state a claim, an overarching opinion, that is true and accurate based on my sources and somewhat responds to the prompt. So this is actually an instance where I want to ignore the second half of this here, because if it's only somewhat responding to the prompt, I won't get to precise. So I'm gonna ignore that second half. I want it to be fully responding to the prompt. So to remind myself of how to do that, I'm gonna list out what should be included in my essay based on what I can recall from my prompt. So I need to discuss interaction of language and mind. I need to discuss manipulation, impact on self, and impact on society. So for my um, overarching reason to be va valid, it has to include all of these. It also needs to be defensible. Someone could argue with me for defensible. So I'm gonna go in and what I'm gonna do is reread all of my reasons to then think about how do I put all of these reasons into one overarching claim, just one. So, I'm going to go through and I'm going to take a moment right now to actually remove my current highlighting because I'm done with what's here in my evidence. I'm going to leave the highlighting that's on my questions, remove the highlighting that's on my reasons and evidence, and then I have a clear screen that I can look at. I get a little distracted if I leave too much highlighting at once. So now I'm going to read each of my reasons and I'm going to think about how to craft that one overarching claim and how to ensure it includes all four parts of my prompt. So interaction of the mind and language, manipulation, self and society, but it has to be based on my reasons. So I'm going to reread my reasons and highlight what I want to include. In Orwell's perspective, abstract language prevents listeners and readers from visualizing the meaning that those abstract words represent. And if a person cannot visualize what is written or said, they are less likely to understand. So here, when I talk about language, it's abstract language can prevent me ultimately from understanding. So I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight. Oh can prevent me from understanding. So that's the interaction of language and the mind. That's the first part of the prompt. So I'll go up, I'm putting my cursor by number one, hitting enter, arrowing up and writing claim. And I'm just gonna put these ideas up there for now because they're ideas that I know I'm gonna want to blend together. But that only deals with the first part of the prompt, so I need to read the rest of my reasons. When listeners and viewers fail to visualize the meaning behind politicians' words, it's easier for politicians to present a lie as fact, which in turn enables politicians to convince the public that horrific acts are necessary and reasonable. So for the manipulation part, it's this convincing the public um, that things are reasonable because of lies. So now I'm gonna go up and add this up there as well, because this is a new idea that I'll wanna include. Convince the public through lies. So now I have um, the mind interacting with language and manipulation, but I haven't fully addressed the prompt until I pull in things about myself and society in terms of language and manipulation. So I need to read my third and final reason here. In order to resist linguistic manipulation, I must be on vigilant watch of what I choose to listen to, read, and watch. Furthermore, I must hold myself and society accountable for using clear, concise language so that we avoid the temptation to manipulate each other. So for me, for self, I had said that I, for self, will be careful of what I choose to listen to, watch, and read. That's for me. I'm gonna pull this up.
And then for society, using clear and accountable link or clear and concise language to avoid manipulation of each other. So add that here. Okay, so now I've put all of my ideas up here and I'm not going to use this language as is because otherwise I'm being very repetitive, which would be difficult for my reader to follow. So I'm going to think about these ideas and blend them into one or two sentences that reflect my overarching claim. So language is a tool that can either promote or prevent um, understanding. So here I have understanding. I'm going to delete that out. I've dealt with the idea. My two ideas are related, so I'm going to use semi, a semicolon instead of a period to show that they are related. So I'll move on to the next idea, which is about abstract language and preventing understanding. They're related, so I'll use the semicolon, not the period. Abstract language. Um, prevents. So actually I'll use a complex sentence structure starting with the word while. While concrete language enhances understanding, abstract language enhances understanding, prevents understanding. Again, this is my complex sentence structure. I have the first half of the sentence and then a comma and then the second half of the sentence in a period. And at the beginning of the sentence, I have one of those abubus words and that's a subordinating conjunction. So here I have while. So now I've dealt with this abstract language part, I can delete that. And I need to move into the next idea that I want to include in my claim. <clears throat> so now it's about convincing people that horrible things are necessary through lies. When using abstract language, the public can be convinced that lies are, or it can be convinced that can be more, can more easily be manipulated. Let's see, can more easily be manipulated convincing them that lies are truths. Okay, so now I've dealt with that. I can delete that out. I also want to point out this sentence is again a complex sentence and that was on purpose to show a relationship between I, an idea. So in my first sentence, I'm talking about abstract language. I want to move on to manipulation, but I can't just move into manipulation without showing how abstract language is connected to the new idea. So in order to do that, when I try and show relationships between ideas, in my sentence, I'll start with the idea from the first sentence, and in the second half of that second sentence, I'll add the new idea. So again, in the first half of the second sentence, I restated the idea that was in sentence one. Then I went into the second half of my sentence to develop the new idea. This is an error I've seen in outline number two already that we're not yet showing relationships between ideas. So make sure you're using that syntax of a complex sentence structure, which is what I have here, to show relationships. With that, I'll move on to the final piece in my claim here. And this has to do with like individuals and society. As members of a democratic, democratic society, we must, this is spelt incorrectly, let me fix this. Democrat society. Notice I have to sound my words out when I'm spelling them sometimes. Um, we must be mindful of what words we allow into our minds which means we must, which means for me personally, at least, this is where I'm starting to use some of my own voice through that a positive, that aside, which means for me personally, at least, that I must um, 
carefully consider, I'm going to use some alliteration here, that's, that's more um, voice and sophisticated language when I start to pull in those um, literary devices into my own writing. So here I have my alliteration that I must clearly consider what news I opt to consume. For society, so this part I'm done, this was about me. This last part was about society. For society, we must require that all members of society use concrete language. All members of society use, they use, okay, I'm conjugating my verb correctly, use concrete language so that we can all understand the world around us and make choices accordingly. All right, now I'll delete this last part out and I have my claim. Now, when I think back to my rubric, I have a valid claim because it is true based on my texts and it's defensible, someone could argue with me. So for instance, here I'm saying society should require that people use concrete language. Someone could tell me, no, that's not society's job. That's your, your job as an individual to make sure that you use concrete language. So someone could fight with me about that. So I am defensible. So I have at least a D. I am precise because I explain why I believe I'm true or why I believe I'm correct. So for instance, in this one here, I say we should require concrete language so that we can understand. That's why we need concrete language. And I did that for each part of my claim, okay? So I am precise and I'm sufficient because I deal with all four parts of the prompt fully connecting, okay? Um, so I deal with how language impacts the mind. I deal with how language can cause manipulation. That's the second part. I deal with how that impacts me as an individual. That's the third part and how it connects to society, which is that fourth part. So I'd say I'm sufficient. Um, I would not say I have an A yet. I'm not nuanced. I didn't go on to show how I'm offering a new point of view. I'm really just synthesizing points of view from the authors that I've read. So that's how you craft an overarching claim. And that's the end of this modeling video.